Fist and Dighton to smother them, and they were buried at the stairfoot, meekly deep in the ground, under a great heap of stone, where, in fact, the bones were found, or near enough. And it is interesting to note that when Tyrrell, who Moore was suggesting was actually responsible for killing, when Tyrrell was later executed by Henry VII, he was alleged to have confessed to causing the deaths of the two boys. Well, now, members of the jury, that's all I intend to say in opening at this stage. The prosecution alleged and will, will prove, firstly, the princes were killed in the tower, that Richard had the motive, secondly. Thirdly, he had ruthlessly killed others on his way to the throne. Fourthly, they could not have been killed without his knowing, but he remained silent and blamed no one else. And finally, fifthly, contemporaneously, he was believed to have been responsible as recorded by the chroniclers at the time. Try this matter according to the evidence, which circumstantial and hearsay, though it must be through course of time, we submit that should drive you to only one conclusion on the balance of probability. And therefore, members of the jury, that evidence I will now call before you so that you can, in due course, come to your proper verdict. <coughs> Mr. Richards, please. <coughs> Mr. Dillon, in the circumstances of this case, you may think that uh, the formality, indeed more than the formality, the procedure of taking the oath by witnesses should be dispensed with. Do both counsel agree? Uh, Lord, my learned friend and I have had the opportunity of discussing it we both agree. Much obliged. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Richards, your full name, please. Geoffrey Michael Richards. Uh, and uh, what are your qualifications? I'm senior lecturer in history at Lancaster University. Now, I want to ask you straight away about the events following Edward IV's death and leading to Richard becoming king. First, uh, in a sentence or two, would you summarize your interpretation of those events. I think the whole thing has to be seen in the context of the factional struggles which had split England in the late years of Edward IV and in the reign of Edward V. Richard moves to become protector in order to secure his position against his enemies and when that proves to be insufficient he moves to become king to further secure his position and to maintain that position it's necessary for him to dispose of his principal threat, the princes. And I think that throughout, one can see running through all his actions a continual thread, and that is fear and hatred of the Woodville clan. What was the power of the Woodvilles? Uh, how had they achieved this power? Through the marriage of Elizabeth to Edward IV, as a result of which he built them up with land, titles, positions, until they'd become a deeply entrenched factional interest. And by the time Edward IV died, and shortly thereafterwards, they were in direct control of the court, the council, the Tower of London, the king's treasure, the fleet, and what is most important of all, the two princes. And it was through the two princes that they hoped to rule England. And I think I'm right in saying they'd brought up, the relatives of Elizabeth Woodville, the mother, had brought up the Prince Edward and Prince Richard. Yes. In Ed the West Country and Wales. Edward, Prince of Wales, had been brought up at Ludlow by his uncle, Anthony Woodville, Earl Rivers, uh, Ludlow being the head <coughs> administrative headquarters of the Principality of Wales. Yes. And Richard, Duke of York, had been brought up by his mother, Elizabeth Woodville, at court. So, to all intents and purposes, these two boys are Woodvilles. Um, what had happened immediately after Edward IV's death in relation to um, the Richard's protectorship of the new boy king? The council had met, the royal council, and dominated by the Woodvilles, had vested regency powers in the council itself and had not appointed Richard as protector. And this clearly gave substance to his fears that he was going to be outmaneuvered. Lord Hastings, who I was telling the jury was Lord Chamberlain and Captain of the Guard, very powerful man, correct? Lord Hastings was a pivotal figure at court, a pillar of Edward IV's court and also of Edward V. Pro-Edward, but anti-Woodville? Very strongly. He'd had two long and well-publicised feuds with key members of the Woodville clan. Did he uh, summon Richard to, to come south and assist? He urged him to come as soon as possible to take possession of the king and assert his protectorship. And 
uh, as uh, I don't think there can be any dispute about this, this was done at Stony Stratford by Richard and Buckingham. Yes, Buckingham was Rivers another... and, uh, and Gray, the Woodville escort, uh, being arrested. Yes. Uh, how did Prince Edward uh, react to that? The arrest of his uh, uncle and half-brother, was it? Yes, his half-brother. Yes. Gloucester and Buckingham explained why they'd done it, and they said that the Woodvilles were plotting against Richard and trying to deprive him of the protectorship. And Edward replied that he'd found no fault in his relatives and wanted to keep them with him. Yes. Now, I think the result of the arrest of the Woodvilles was that the Queen, uh, Elizabeth Woodville, the Queen, took the rest of her family uh, into sanctuary in Westminster Abbey. That's right. Can you tell us in a sentence, uh, Mr Richards, what sanctuary was? All churches were able to give a measure of protection to fugitives from the law for a certain amount of time. Some religious establishments, notably Westminster Abbey, were able to give permanent protection to fugitives. So she should have been safe, then? In theory. On May the 10th, I think, the council then confirmed, the, after the Woodvilles had uh, been disposed of, the council then confirmed Richard's protectorship? Unanimously. Coronation fixed for June the 24th? Yes. Was Richard now secure? No, Richard wasn't secure. Why because not? The Woodvilles were still alive, even if temporarily dispersed. Edward V had expressed his partiality for them, and Richard will not have been unaware of the fact that the two previous Dukes of Gloucester, both of whom had exercised power during the youth of their royal nephews, had both been disposed of once those nephews had come of age and taken power, and Richard must have feared that he be carried on as protector and gave up. When Edward V came of age, which he could do at 15, he might very well be for the high jump, because the Woodvilles would come back into power. Yes. So what did he do? Richard asked the council to condemn for treason and execute Rivers and Gray. Who had been arrested at Stony Stratford and were being kept in custody somewhere. In Richard's castles in Yorkshire. Did the council agree to that cause? The council not only didn't agree, but they expressed disquiet that the king's chosen advisers should be kept under guard. And so what is your interpretation of what happened then? I think that this triggered Richard's desire to go for the throne. He couldn't be secure merely as protector because the council wouldn't back his desire to get rid of his principal enemies. I think there's evidence from one of the chroniclers, Mancini, I think it is, that uh, Buckingham then sounded out <coughs> those uh, uh, in the establishment uh, as to uh, what view they would take of that course. Yes, Buckingham was the intermediary and he sounded out first of all and most importantly Lord Hastings. Yes. Uh, if, if he would accept Richard as king, and the answer clearly was that he would accept Richard as protector, but not as king. And what happened to Hastings in the result? Richard called a council meeting to the tower at which he arrested and summarily executed Hastings and imprisoned those other leading members of the council whom he thought would have supported Edward V. How, what was the reaction to that? Uh, a shock of horror through the entire establishment because this was an unprecedented act to execute a major councillor in peacetime and not only that, but the citizenry were also dismayed because of Hastings' popularity as a general benefactor. Keeping the matter chronological, on June the 10th, Richard wrote uh, the letter to York asking for uh, uh, troops. Yes, I have that letter before me if you'd like me to read it. Well, I th just re read the relevant <coughs> part, would you? To come to aid and assist us against the Queen, her blood adherents and affinity, who have intended and daily do intend to murder and utterly destroy us and our cousin, the Duke of Buckingham, and the old royal blood of this realm. Yes, very well. What I, was I, the date of that again? June the 10th, 1483. Thank you. And I think they arrived shortly before the coronation. They did. The, the, the point was to threaten people with the arrival of this vast horde of northerners and to cow London by the threat of their imminent arrival. Um, June the 16th, was Prince Richard... Uh, um, well, I, I, I won't use a word and, uh, which might be indicating a suggestion to you. Uh, was Prince Richard, uh, did, was he released, let's use a neutral word, released from the sanctuary in the Abbey? Yes, he was. Richard had now cowed the council who were afraid of suffering the same fate as Hastings, and so they agreed to a delegation going to ask Elizabeth Woodville to release Prince Richard for the coronation of his brother. Was that a, a good reason or a pretext, do you think? A, a total pretext, as far as I'm concerned. Why? Because he wanted to get Richard, Duke of York, who was the heir to the throne after Edward V, into his power and into the tower before he could move to secure his own position as king. Well, now, having got Richard from Sanctuary and into the tower with his brother, the proclaimed king, was his position then secure? 